He's the chair, but I get the gavel at the moment, so I'm going to turn him <laughs> loose on you. As we go down here, you're going to see the major change is I've proposed a part-time assistant accountant. Uh, we plan to use a few contractors until maybe we would get into that sort of rainbow and unicorns of a better financial situation. When clearly, we can't wait for that. Uh, for a town this size, having just a town uh, accountant and then a department assistant that is b essentially a, um, uh, you know, you'd say a, an expense clerk on there. It's, it, it's not going to work for the town. We need somebody else on board that can do some of the day-to-day -day data entry. Also that can, uh, can pick up some of the other slack when we're going into things such as closing the, closing the books at the end of the year. When we're going into with the, the Department of Revenue. And we need an experienced person in there as well. So, um, you know, the part-time assistant town accountant. 37 740 it could be aggressive on there i can't tell you how many hours because that may that may depend on what sort of person we have going in there we may have to pay a little bit extra to get the better person on the conference call with the department of revenue the accounting department is a concern for the department of revenue so we need to give it as many tools as possible because until we have the finances done how can we really start fixing the rest of the town unless our finances are solid and all our accounting practices so. Um, you'll see the uh, professional services line is still at a higher amount of the 25000 My belief is if we do get the part-time assistant town accountant, we can reduce that some to offset the cost of the position, the assistant position, but we'd still want to set some money aside if we needed some, some outside help, but I don't want to rely on that anymore. And uh, with that, I will open myself up to the chair. Just first, uh, let's start by saying you cannot continue to throw people at this problem. I don't believe that this is uh, the large majority of the problem is not personnel. I believe it's the system you're using. And I also believe that the size of this town, given, and, and you need, I don't know, have you been out to, to talk to other towns and seen some of the accounting software they're using or the other one? I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. Uh, Munis. Munis. Uh, Munis. Munis. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen how it operates? Because yeah, one, remember the lady, well, at one point we talked to someone. Yep. And what she told me was it takes less people to do the job if you have the right accounting system. And also, I think if we're going to improve our relationship with the DOR, one thing that would help improve this is, is an improvement in our accounting system. Because I've heard him say, I've heard from the CPA firm as well as... Uh, well, that's really, I haven't been able to talk to DR for obvious reasons, but uh, that we could benefit from an upgrade in our accounting system. So I think whether or not, um, whether we, depending on what option we have to decide on this year, that's something we really need to explore is not so much continuing to throw people at the problem, but looking at the, the accounting system and seeing what would it take to upgrade the system and make it a little more flexible. Because I think you have some talent here. It's just a, a question of... You know, it's one thing to be doing this and the other thing to be molding clay, you know, and that's where we're, I think we're running into part of our issue. I, and, and I feel free to disagree with me because, you, you know, we have in the past. But yeah. I honestly believe that given the right tools that our county people are going to look a lot better. Yeah, I think one of the things is VADAR is finally creating the uh, PO system for the school, so a school in the town side. Believe it or not, even though they have VADAR 1, the <coughs> school side wasn't really operating as, as a true system for there. So you're talking about extra steps, and that is how you can literally lose hundreds of thousands of dollars and say, say nope, we're clear on our budget, we're all set. If that PO system isn't, isn't functioning properly or isn't working, you don't know what you've actually spent. And that's where you can suddenly have $300,000 that you said, oh my, my gosh, we shouldn't have spent that. And it's, <coughs> it sounds like it shouldn't happen, and you're right. 
it shouldn't with a with a accounting system so we have talked about looking into others um, you know part of it's the all of the staff at the town hall have had training on vadar now every one of them will probably look you in the eye i shouldn't <laughs> shouldn't say this but tell you they they've they don't know how to use it and it's one of those systems again that unless you're working with it every single day it's going to it's going to get past you it's not um uh, not the most operational friendly. I use it a lot and I'm able to, I don't post to it, but I can uh, extrapolate data and such. But unless you're really, really working with it, you, you wouldn't know which, which form to use, which one's a true indication of what your balance are because some of the reports don't reflect uh, some, some purchases. So it can be, it's a bit of a bear. <laughs> uh, other than that, I, you know, again, I, I can see where you're adding it back to to create the create the help we need given the circumstances with the you know DOR and, and other things. But at the same time, I I think it's a hard sell from the standpoint that we said we were going to reduce mm -hmm. the amount of expenses by adding this additional position right. from the accounting side, and we're really not doing that if we do this. Yeah. So that's and I understand, you know, it. it it's just one of those things where we, we we continue to try to fix the problem by working on the symptoms of the problem, but we don't fix the, the, the core problem that's causing it. And, and from our standpoint, we, we want good numbers too because we're making decisions or we're going to have to make decisions as far as advice on numbers that may or may not be accurate. And that's a very difficult thing as well as the selectmen and, and yourself. So. You know, maybe that's something we need to look at in short order is, you know, what do we need to do to get in a system that that's going to give us what we want as far as information, so. Can you read the bubble over Derek's head? Which is, yeah, that's a nice thought, Larry, but how do we pay for it? That's. Well, and again, that's, that's my point. I, we're paying for it now. We're not having We it. paid for we're it for in it the now. past. No, no, we're paying for it. Sorry. We're paying for it now. We, uh, the conversation we had the other day with the Department of Revenue, we're paying for not having that system. Oh, we, we, it's yeah. no, it's cost us hugely because right. we've been through a lot of finger pointing, a lot of bad experiences in the accounting department, but in the six or seven years that I've been sitting here, I've been hearing <laughs> problems with this system, problems with the system, and at some point you have to realize it really is the system. So another bitter pill to choke on, but if we're going to start to fix things, um, that's a real priority. You said it. We cannot get the house in order until we have valid numbers, numbers that we can have confidence in. So. Yeah, I can't think of a worse thing is that I go before uh, the finance committee or the selectmen and make statements, and it's all they're incorrect because of bad data. It it undermines everything we do. So, so, so you probably, but I also having been through transitions like this I don't even want to think about what it's like to transfer from one system to another and the cost and the training involved but that's yeah, nothing <laughs> <laughs> no problem all right, all right. The line. Yeah. there you go okay, yeah. what does the auditor say charge. about this about the accounting system about, about the accounting system and we can always bring them in to, to ask them on there and have it go in front of the audit committee, I think, is what's going to be the next decision. Uh, well, we'll have that, that conversation with them as a as member of the audit committee. But that question was asked to the uh, the guy from Powers and Sullivan. Craig, I think. Craig, I can't remember his name. And uh, his basic comment was, it, yes, it, it could it could uh, it could be a problem. He won't. I, I don't think they're ever going to come out and give you a clear <laughs> answer unless you ask him straight up and it's not on camera. But um, I don't think they were real, really impressed with Vadar either. They they didn't didn't like the system. I think it's if you go back and read go back and read some of the management reports, because I think that part of that nine hundred thousand dollar problem that everybody talked about. If you go back and start reading through there, you might find that part of it is the system that we're using and how quickly it is to lose lose sight of something because it has to be entered a certain way in the system. So. 
I just have a quick question. It has nothing to do with you guys talking, but uh, I got this extra sheet in here. I don't know what to do with it, so maybe you can answer the question. What is ADA coordinator? Uh, that's the Disabilities Commission. Well, there Veterans should be about four hundred dollars. No, just regular disabilities. So, handicap ramps and things like that. Mm-hmm. No, but it was in here. It's just a line that we have in there. I was the just budget. I was trying to find that in the budget part, and I couldn't see yeah. it. So, is it uh, is it subbed under something else? No, there's probably um, I. You want to know with the tabs? I didn't print out all the tabs, so I would have to well, look. Well, I'm, I'm looking so. at it along with along with the budget. Oh, if I you look at the budget and um, one of the last pages of the general government, so it should probably be three or four of six. It's not cheap. Four of six, yeah, you'll right. see um, Commission on Disabilities at the very top page. Oh, that's, thank you. It's not named the same thing as what I needed to understand. Thank you. Derek, uh, a new accounting system, is that something that would be capital? Is that something that could be funded, bond funded? I think you could borrow for that because you're probably looking about a four to five hundred thousand dollar investment for that. So um, I don't know how many years you could go out for it. You might only be able to go out for five years or so. It would depend on what the um, what they consider the lifespan of it. But we have been able to go out for technology and such. So I think we'd be able to borrow for that. And most places, I, I do think borrow for it because it is a it is a huge initial upfront cost something to consider definitely thank you madam clerk i appreciate no it problem. good afternoon mary ann silva town clerk Marion has a special headache of directing three budget, budgets all together. Yeah. Three small ones. And we were trying to get together, and uh, she was hunting me down pretty well to meet with me, so I appreciated that. Most people are avoiding me. <laughs> no, I don't do that. <laughs> it's always a pleasure, Derek. Hey. Okay. You all just good. Sure. Just go. um, good afternoon. Um, as town clerk, um, as Derek said, I'm responsible for overseeing three separate budgets, the town clerk's office, town meeting, and elections. Um, when I set up my budget for this year, I try to actually level fund. Um, I think we all pretty well knew that things weren't that rosy. So um, I don't know which one you want to start with. Let's do town clerk first. Sure. <laughs> Page, um, page 16 of 40 is the town clerk. Okay, as you know, um, Donna Rhodes, who is my assistant, and Anita Mendes, um, they are in unions. So, of course, their salary is based on whatever the union contract provides the step increases. We were told to also provide for a 2% um, increase, I guess, just in case. My salary, <laughs> which I was a little shocked when I got my printout, um, because I had asked Derek for a 3% um, increase because I was told that's what the any, any employee that was with the town 10 years or more, which I this year would be my 20th year, um, would probably be getting a 3%. Um, so when I did see it, it just uh, uh, took me by surprise, Derek. <laughs> so. I'm trying to make sure you stay with us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two more years. Um, so basically that's that. Um, I don't know if you want to discuss that. Uh. Yeah, just to lead into that, there's uh, the steel workers. If you were as part of their contract that we signed, if you'd been with the town greater for 10 years, you were eligible for a step six, which is a 3% <coughs> raise. Uh, the, although an elected official, uh, the Madam Clerk's position would essentially be a steel worker's position and it made sense that that would position would be increased with her having more than 10 years as well so it was um 
it was in line of keeping within the uh, the the union matrix, even though technically your your position's elected, so it wouldn't be in there. Um, so that was a choice that I made. It was not requested of me. So. And does that have to be, that has to be voted on by town? It sure does. Right. Usually Article 5. Okay. Um, repair and maintenance. You have to understand, I, I still work off of the old system, <laughs> so the new numbers sometimes confuse me. But um, what I do is usually under repairs and maintenance, um, we have a rental water cooler. Um, that would also include my, the rental of my copy machine. We also have to pay a maintenance agreement, um, which the water cooler is $36 a year. The rental of the can and copier is approximately 1815 for the year. And the copier maintenance is $300 a year. We also have two typewriters in the office that we have serviced. And um, that should actually, they're actually, it's actually, I think it's $75 a piece to have them uh, cleaned and maintained during the year. What's a typewriter? <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, uh, it's funny, people will ask us that. We have a lot of forms that the state has not caught up with technology, believe it or not. So we still have a lot of forms that they, it has to be typed. We have no choice. So, um, and someday, I hope, <laughs> before I leave, the town will have enough money to um, get us into a system where these things will all be done on the computer. But until then, we have our two typewriters. So, and then I have the printing and mailing, which is our census. Um, Derek did reduce it, um, which was good because when I got the, the bill for this year, the um, postage was 3,500 instead of the 45 I asked for. So it actually was 3,555. Um, to set up actually was reduced. It was only $1,700 instead of the 22. And the printing of the books, I would like to keep it 16 because we did not print any books last year because we had no money. And we are supposed to print street, the street list books. Minimally, even if it's 25 of them, we are supposed to print them, but we had no money in the budget to do that last year. Um, other purchase services or other professional well, let's see what you have it under. Because I think you took that out of my budget. <laughs> yeah, we'd combined them together. Did you? Is that what you the, did? Yeah, they look at that was a combination of I think uh, these three. Okay. On the, so it's this is still sort of when we're putting the putting them back together. Okay. With the old. System. I wasn't sure so. because I got a, I was a little bit nervous when I saw that <laughs> because the clerk we have the bonds by law we have to, the three of us have to be bonded. Yeah. Um, and that is $100 for each one of us. Um, we have the tag company for our dogs, which runs approximately $200 a year. And we have the university products, which is our uh, vital record books. We have to store them, and they have to be stored in a acid-free, um, I don't know what you, it, it's clear plastic, <laughs> but it's, it's acid-free so that they, it lasts a lot longer. Unfortunately, it's very expensive. Um, it's seven hundred and eighty dollars. So, but it does provide the protection we need for our vital records. Um, I also have my associations, um, my memberships that I pay. Office supplies. I asked for twenty two hundred, but I'll take the two thousand. <laughs> and travel and conferences. John explained to me the dues are going to be yeah put in that. put in with that. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? One of the interesting things about our departmental budgets is we vote them as pure salary and expenses at town meeting. So as such, they are a bottom line budget. So if you were to print these out, you may see um, in a department one of these lines to be, uh, to be overspent but surplus in another line. So then at that point, as long as the bottom line is, uh, is positive, they have not overspent their budgets. So it gives the departments a little bit of flexibility that if they know one thing's going to run more than another, they can make those decisions during the year. So what you're saying is the line items are a breakdown, an explanation, right. and a budget tool. But if you, if the mailing and postage costs more 
and it comes out of office supplies, that's not a problem. That's not, as, long as, as long as there's enough money to cover. As long as the bottom line right. overall. Uh, the overall. Right. Yep. That's what we've been told, as long as that bottom line Correct. is not overspent. Right. So. Okay. Okay. Are you doing this or not? Okay. Elections and registration. Okay. As you know, page, we do have three. I'm sorry, page oh, 17 of 40. We do have three elections. Um, this is 2014, so uh, 2013 was our off year. Mm -hmm. So this year we have a state primary on September, and I think it's, it was moved to September 9th, and then I don't, I'm not sure, November 2nd or 4th. It's usually the first Tuesday of November is our state election. And of course we have our town election that April. And I, I can't remember, I think it's the 6th, I'm not sure. I thought it was April Fool's, was it? The no, that's this year. Okay, yeah. But next year might <laughs> next be the fourth. I'm <laughs> not sure. I didn't, haven't looked that far in advance. but. And that's one of the reasons you will see an increase versus FY14. Right. Yeah. And those those two extra elections, there's essentially nothing we can do about it, or there isn't. You know? Actually, I have it right here. Yeah. It says April 1st, 2015, September 9th, November 4th, and April 1st. Oh. Again. That's weird. Can't be I, right. Yeah, I wouldn't think. It must be a leap year. Is it a leap year? <coughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe no. there's a leap going on. <laughs> there's a leap going on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, for the election budget, um, because we have three elections, we now only have, we have six precincts, but we only have four locations. Um, <laughs> so hopefully that'll reduce a little because you don't need two police officers. You only need one police officer per precinct. And that is actually my highest expense, um, the police officers, other than, of course, your, your staffing. Um, registrars, we have three registrars, um, including myself. But I get the stipend, mm -hmm. the $700 stipend, so I'm not included in this. Um, I have one registrar that has been ill, so it's been two registrars that have been actually working. I usually, I, I do have six wardens, six clerks, I have four deputy wardens and four deputy clerks, which I'm, I'm hoping to fill those positions, and we have approximately 40 tellers. <coughs> so our tellers do receive $8 an hour. Our deputy clerks and wardens receive $8.25 an hour. Our wardens, eight fifty, dollars and our clerks, and our registrars receive $9 an hour. That also includes, they come in, they have to come in, um, like we have nomination papers out right now, they have to come in and certify those. So whatever amount of time it takes them to do that, they get paid for their time coming into the office. So, um, and of course we have Dawn and Anita that um, work overtime. Um, we've gotten to the point that if we have a very slow evening, we generally send, they, they switch off, they're really good about it. One will go home so that we're not overspending. So if, if it's not very busy state elections, that's a totally different town as you can be, as you know, a little slow sometimes. And, and that's what I was going to ask with regard to the town election. Is there a requirement that we have to have four polling places open? I mean, yes. I know you, you, we, you have, we, have, we have four locations. They all have to be available to the voters. All right, we can't consolidate further down. For, I know at one point we had six. We've consolidated some of them. We right, can't which I have no problems consolidating. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. I mean, it, because most of our locations now you have to drive to anyway. Right, but you have to find a building big enough to house when you start consolidating. Okay. And right now we have, we have four and five at Decus yep. at the gym, and we have six and three at Mine at Forest in the gym. Precinct two is at Hammond, which there is no charge. Uh, Kenny has not charged the town to use the building. Um, and precinct one, which is at a town hall. Okay. So. There's a online voting, right? Or voting, advanced voting? Hold on. They just, didn't they just approve? <laughs> they, they did, but we have not received word as to when that's going into effect. Not in a rush for that. That's going to be fun. <laughs> you, you can, <laughs> it is going to be fun. You can vote absentee, of course. You're not going to be in the town, but what you're talking about is totally different now. Yeah. It's going to be very different. So, um, Printing and mailing, uh, we don't print the ballots for the state elections. Of course, you know the state does that, but we have to print the ballots for the town election. And by law, you have to print a ballot for every registered voter in your town, whether or not they show up for the election. So I have to print 15,500 ballots. So. That's why it can be expensive. 
And we usually get how many? How much is the turnout? It depends what's yeah. actually on the ballot. I bet you they'll turn out this year because we snow have the question, yep. the snow removal. <laughs> the question. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, what ballot. question? <laughs> yeah. So they'll probably, it, it'll probably be a ho higher volume. Generally, it's only been like 2,200, 2,500. So. Who's going to know how many print? So, Tom, let's not say that on record, please. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm thinking the same thing. TV? That's my thought <laughs> bubble. Yes, but, yes. But. yes, he didn't ask that. He, he didn't say that, that but, but. How dare you say that to Madam Claire? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Okay. Wow. Never mind. Um, the other purchase services is coding the touch marks. We have the machines that, by law, because of ADA regulations, have to be at each precinct, and you have to code the machine, which they, they can vote. It has the um, braille. Thank you. The braille. Um, somebody that you know is your elderly. It has the hearing. The uh, what do you call those? Headphones. Earphones. Headphones. So they can sit at the table and it has to be up and running <clears throat> at the precincts. We have to code the AccuVote machines, which is the machines that you slip the ballots into. So <laughs> we do provide lunch for our workers uh, based on the fact that are we paying the min win minimum wage? Eight bucks an hour, they can have lunch, I guess. That's it's yeah. also for some of the elections and such, you don't want the people leaving and going out and coming back. Right. They are. Yeah. State elections, it's 15 hours. Yeah. Town elections, it's about 12. So it is a long, long day. I think they deserve a bowl of chowder. You know, I mean, if you're going to be, be there all with day. You, I've been very fortunate because they are dedicated people. There and, is no doubt about and it. And they have great personalities. Most of them oh, are I'm not good. grumpy for being there for that period of time. I'm just glad to hear that. that. And a little bit of gruel isn't costing us too much. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, um, Mill Pond does it for us, and they've always kept it. You know, reasonable. That's nice. So that's selections. Uh, we'll travel. I haven't put in for that yet. I really should. <laughs> I do a lot of traveling on that day. Yeah, so I, I always forget. I'm not going to do that this year. So and then we have town meeting. And town meeting basically stays the same unless, unless. Lucky number one of 40. Is this for both town meetings that we're anticipating this year? Yes. All right. The quicker we get them done, of course, the, the more money is. we save. Well, that's, that's our goal, too, as yeah. well. But. <laughs> so um, the only, the only um, item on this would be other professionals and that's the cot services um, we used to have um, a lady in town that always used to call us for the cot services and unfortunately she passed away and we have not had anyone that I know of call for cot services so Wait, what is that I'm sorry am I cot services uh, they do the sign oh okay oh. thank you the sign languages so they got uh, sign language they um I think Nelson Mandela funeral <laughs> we'll get him. Well, I don't think he knew what he was saying, yeah, right? <laughs> he, was fun. he was having fun. It's a scary thought when you think about it to be that close to the president of the United States. That's yeah. right. So, um, you know, one of the things that we had an interest in, I'm sorry, it's sort of a side <laughs> tangent, is uh, we're trying to see if we can't get, um, was it, to Gatra to help out with transporting some people to the to the town meeting some of the seniors have stated they're unable to to bring themselves there and such and it might be might be worth it see if Gatcher could try and do that um, yeah I, I think it'd be something interesting because they feel a little disenfranchised and not able to get there so and we do receive phone calls from the elderly asking if there's anybody providing transportation okay. because that is one of my biggest complaints they tell me they would go they mm -hmm. would attend but they're not going to drive at night at night yeah. that time by time we get out of there walk sometimes that in. exactly yeah. so that would probably be a very um, good idea yeah. keep you on for another couple of years yeah <laughs> so. but actually that, that's it for me so um, I don't know if you have any questions or go ahead Bon. I'm just asking, Derek, Derek, you got this other thing on the side here. And now I'm not sure I'm reading this correctly. 
the the. Total if you put on the original. Yeah, if you look at that, that's the total amount that we have for well, uh, personal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Not not how many people employed right. in the clerk's office. No. <laughs> the only three of us. We'd be in trouble. Um, with regard to town meeting, and again, I apologize, I'll make this brief because it's late in the day and we're tired, but um, something that occurred to me in discussion recently, we've seen fewer and fewer participants in town meeting and a town government overall. And I remember back in the day that we used to send the warrant out and the warrant got mailed to everybody in town. Did it not? That was done through the finance committee. Yeah. And whether people came or not, they were at least educated as to the issues and what was going on, and then it really was shame on them. Um, and I don't know what the cost would be to do that again. It does not look like something that we could afford to do. My, if memory serves me, I think it was like seventy-four or seventy-five hundred dollars. Hundred dollars at one point. What year was that? Well, Patrick was on the finance committee. That's why I'm thinking back. I All remember right. they used to send it out. Okay. Thank so you. Probably double that now. I'm maybe, yes. maybe in a. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm about to get yelled at by Bob. Um, maybe in the format we print it in, it would be expensive, but possibly an alternative format. Um, like I know font that size of legal notices. It, well, <laughs> we could do it on four pages. Yeah, I know. I understand. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it could be reduced in the, into that fashion, but certainly people, you know, could read it more comfortably at home than they can, you know, sitting in a in a in a dark semi dark room. It has to be a font that they can read in that light. But at home might be a different sort of format, a condensation of the material. Or if they care, they can go on the website. So I, I just. Yeah. Yeah, they can do that, that as well. That will be future discussion that we'll have. Yeah, because I just well, if we did, I think it's up to what forty-seven cents it's going to be now for. Yeah, for, yeah. yeah at fifteen thousand people, seven thousand fifty dollars, and that's to send a letter, not a, a, a one one. Yeah. So I mean, I was thinking not even, a booklet. Yeah, mm -hmm. what if we sent out? Please check out online. But we do, we do let it know through WCTV co covering your your meetings, the selectmen's meeting. We put it up. On the marquee, we have it on the town website. Uh, it's in the local newspapers. So, uh, I, but it's I not understand. sitting on your counter where you have to pick it up and put it in the trash. Yeah. And before you put it in the trash, you look through it. And yeah, I the just, budget I, gets printed in the yeah. local newspaper. I believe the I believe the warrant gets printed. Mm -hmm. in that it has as to well. be yes. So, yeah. yeah. So does the budget get is printed it, too? Is it yeah. the warrant or is it the financial package we do for town meeting? No, because I the, think. There's a huge difference between yeah. the warrant and it's the and warrant. They, no, it's the, it's warrant. the warrant yeah. that gets printed. And sent. So. Because if I have a change, I have to send a copy to the attorney general. Yeah, okay. so. that, that makes a big difference. But again, you're not going to hopefully. I mean, that would be really scary to have 15,000 people show up to town meeting. I mean, it'd be a great thing. I'm sure yeah. we'd <laughs> have overflow in every classroom at the high school plus going into the middle school. But uh, usually you see uh, pitchforks and stuff. Sorry, <laughs> when you get sorry that to bring it up. People, we used right? enough time on it. Uh, Thank you. No, no, but it, it, it does have merit. To, and she, she did mention that. And I, I think it's something they used to do to reach all the people, whether right. or not. And then if we had Gatra bus, maybe some of those people would come. I, yeah. Any chance we have an opportunity where it's cost efficient for us to reach the people, that's what we need to do. Well, and I think a big part of that is the transportation. Yeah, we can I see about that because we've clearly we've lost the interest of the people, and and we need it not just for a quorum, but to make the right decisions that affect so many people in this town. So, exactly. So I, I appreciate, I, believe it, Mary Marianne takes so many requests from us and has to do so much re research, and it's always I'm asking for certified this or that, and she is just she helps out so much. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you. Have a good Thank afternoon. <laughs> Administrative, selectman, legal, COA, general, and other. Which one you want to do first? If we want to go through the COA real quick, I sure. think that's Where's a, it at? Uh, that's page 30 of 40. Good enough. You'll see on there uh, the FY15 other is we receive a grant every year, the elder services grant, as well as you'll see the social daycare coordinator. We now have that position will be starting to be paid out of the uh, revolving account for social daycare. 
So you'll see a total of $78,690 that's paid from the Elder Services Grant, which is approximately, um, should be about $43,000. And then the rest is from the social daycare account. Number 30 or 4? Not a lot of money in there. In that that account has, uh, I think the social daycare is currently ninety thousand, about ninety three thousand in it. So. so when I'm looking here, I've got a director, an office manager, an outreach coordinator that are paid through the town, basically. Correct. And the director position is proposed. We don't currently have that that funded. Um, and yeah, that would be uh, twenty five hours. I don't know if we can get it for that, and and we have to look at it and decide what we want to do with this department because right now, it's not serving or doing very much for for the seniors, to to be blunt. So, okay. The repairs and maintenance. You've got other professional, which is they they hire some of the entertainers and such to come through. Um, I'd like to have a little bit more money in there. The office supplies are. You also have some of the arts and crafts supplies as well, and advertising some of the dues and membership the advertising in all departments you'll see an advertising line although we do charge most of the advertising to the general services however if you don't have an advertising line within a department you can't ever charge for that so let's say our general services we are maxed out we don't have any more money in the revo in that account you can't do anything else um, until you go to town meeting to to make a change even if one of your departments had a surplus as it was running well so um, so this is mainly what the the council on aging the daycare senior daycare takes up most of the uh, most of the elder services grant you'll see uh, at least uh, three positions at 5900 each and um, some of the some of the other help the office managers position is also partially charged off till the elder services grant uh, if we had more money in there we could use that grant for for more activities what what is the amount we're getting now? The grant did you say? I believe it's uh, approximately forty three thousand dollars. And that's so, based on what? That's based on uh, f on your population, and uh, what the what they're funding it at for the rate. So we have an abnormal, well not abnormally, we have a larger than usual senior population. So we receive good funds from that. Uh, every year we have to put out all the information for it. And uh, you'll see there's two funding columns of an A and a B, and we've been able to get the B funding, which is always at a, at a higher amount. So right now it's predominantly used for, um, for, for a lot of the, just the staffing itself. So if you look at, if we're receiving, uh, you know, $43,000 in grants and using some of the revolving accounts, we're... You know, we have a department that is almost 50% funded from other sources. Right now, I'm serving as the de facto director, so a lot of the, a lot of the information will go through my office. Uh, if the uh, heat downstairs isn't isn't enough, I'll get the calls directly to my office on it. So it's um, it's a, it's an interesting setup. Can, sorry, can you utilize the uh, board, Council on Aging Board of Directors for any help on this? Can you or? Excuse me, I shouldn't have put that donut in my mouth. Um, That's okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, we haven't had much interaction with the board over the last, last uh, months and such. So I would think that's something that that's also where the director really comes in and being able to have time to set up the meetings with the with the COA board and and having them all engaged with one another for the best function for the seniors and we're, we're missing out on that so now this also covers social services does it not correct yes right. and so social services we're not really I mean 
we've uh, essentially the social services was was really put in there um, previously and besides the uh, the food pantry that we'd had which we closed there's really effectively no other social services I mean we've got the Board of Health that provides certain social services and such and uh, we we can't even really maintain or, or, or help the seniors, which is the primary function, and adding this extra duty on top of it, it's just, it's just not going to work. So. Questions from the board? Yeah, general... Um, let me see if I can find the line for general services. General services is 11 of 40. Derek, just to get back for a minute, on the council of aging, have you advertised for director? Or? No, you, I still, I don't. If I were to, if I were a betting man, I would say that position's probably not good. We're two and a half million dollars in deficit right now. I would think that's one of the positions that probably wouldn't make it. But I think uh, we need to put forward what we could do better for the seniors. So. Uh, general services. This is, when you're going down there, you'll, you've seen postage in a lot of the accounts, but we have massive amounts of postage that come out of the town hall, including some of the excise bills and, and other such funds. Uh, I've increased it to 48000 Historically, we've been close to the $48,000 mark, so we probably would, would want to increase that. We have lowered over the last two years how much mail we've been sending out. Uh, we're doing more of the announcements online or through TV. It's, it is nice to receive something by mail, especially from the town. However, you know, that's, uh, I think it's an, it's a new world where it's more of a function. Yeah. If it's a bill, you probably don't like receiving that from the town. Um, but that's the postage equipment and rentals. The, um, the general services, you'll see we have a postage room, which has a copier in there. That's the copier rental. That's a higher end one. Uh, advertising, again, we have to advertise for bids, for, um, for other positions, for you can, you can run the gamut of it. Even let's say we had to have a, a third, um, third or fourth town meeting and there's no other no other funds available we we can use this fund other purchase services is also the we have a postage machine which saves us uh, time from uh, employment cost and we also that can be FedEx and uh, and other such items this is one of the ones that you'll see the increased request by 10,000 we've been running in the red on this almost every year we've had to put money in there so it's time time we fund it with what what our costs are That is, we have the um, the postage machine. We also have some of the FedEx in there as well. <coughs> so the, the line for postage is just the, the actual cost. Yeah, for the printing and mailing. <coughs> this also, this department as well with that printer, also there's, there's large amounts of paper that get used in there. That copier is by far the fastest and best. <coughs> And it's where we're running off these packets today, even though it was giving me fits this morning. So, uh, we've also done away with um, done away with the copy machine uh, in the in the um, accounting office, and we've uh, it's almost done out of the planning. And since they're right by there, we're going to have them use that machine primarily to try try and cut down so we don't have three le leased machines within probably a 20 foot radius of one another so um, all right the next stop we can go well, hold on money wanted no, no he sorry. sort of answered it with his okay. explanation so i'm good all right if we go to uh administration which is number three of 40 
the first line is uh, is my salary. It is at the that mark because it's halfway between the uh, contract years. My contract starts in January, so it's in the middle of fiscal years. Administrative assistant. The administrative assistant does the health insurance for for all the employees as well as tracking and paying those bills and that's including the the school does the general insurance liability with maya as well as making sure that we have all the fleet schedules on there uh, she also does the workers comp and i was just thinking of um i just mentioned it before she also, a lot of the procurement, she's the one that accepts all the packages from everyone and, and helps make sure that things are, uh, are put in the newspaper properly and such, as well as uh, she, she helps me with the day-to-day -day activities in the office. So that, that position has worn many hats and I've been, been well, well served by, uh, by, by the assistant. <laughs> And we have a second departmental assistant that's 32 hours that also does the payroll for the town and uh, a lot of the benefits for the employees as well as processing the new ones in and um, setting up uh, the interviews and such. So that's also a position that wears many hats. And when one's out, we try and coordinate to make sure that there's at least one of those people in the office at every time. Because um, you can imagine when... Uh, when everyone's gone, it can get a little hectic. Uh, special project and interns. We're looking to bring interns on to do some of the some of the projects. Uh, some are going to be able to be paid by some of the universities. Some will not. Uh, instead of hitting this off, even though they may not be working directly for administration, I just felt it was this was a proper place to place it since any of the interns coming in would have to be done through my office. A longevity is for one of the employees. Deferred compensation is a 457B plan, of which uh, I believe it's 4% of the salary gets put away into, into that plan, and that's uh, by contract. Professional services, you'll see I also have a larger line item on that. Besides the, uh, the general ones we have, it's often that from my office we're you know, there'll be projects that get put together and they're going to cost money. I wanted to start doing, which we froze this year, was was hiring out and having people do studies to help us with um, with the uh, just with the budget items. Like uh, what if we did a revenue based budget and allocated the revenues versus versus some of the costs. It's things that we've been able to put together, but can't really do all the lines. Now, could we get it as the interns? Yes, you could probably use the interns on here, but this is, uh, this is one of the areas to put the money. And you'll see as in this year, if it doesn't materialize, it usually isn't spent. However, sometimes we're at the department head meetings and there's special projects that they want, that they would like to have. And I have used out of my own budget some of those projects to make sure they got forward if we thought it was something that was well worthwhile. So I can tell you out of that $8,000 that probably, you know, 6000 of it is available for other projects. So if it's, Sorry. if the, yeah, you, you could call it for that and then use it, so... Um, office supplies, the advertising, again, that's, we, we've kept a lot of the advertising from my department. If I can use all of that, the 3000 for the procurement, then we don't have to hit from the general services, which as I've said, has been routinely going into deficit. And then the dues membership traveling conference are what they are. It's the mass municipal association, as well as the annual meeting. Um, I haven't, I've chosen for for two reasons uh, not to do travel reimbursement one is it's uh, I feel part of my job to travel I haven't been doing it enough I don't think for for the town and I should attend more of these meetings to help go beyond the borders of the town and the need and the second I drive a Prius so it's just pure profit so I don't you know that I wouldn't feel right so <laughs> um, and that's that's essentially the budget if you go on it historically you know we're still we're still lower than we have been in the FY13 and FY12 numbers, but this is where where we stand currently. Are both of the assistant positions filled at this point? Yes. 
So you're not looking for an additional assistant? No, there seems to be some scuttlebutt around that I've, I've looked to hire a new position or I've posted for one. If anyone can bring me that posting, I, I would love to see it. Yeah, so. that's what I, I thought. <laughs> Thank you very much. I get confused when I go up there because I don't know. Um, it's like I don't know what's who works for the selectman's office and who works for your office. I get all confused. Yeah, and one of the things <laughs> we're looking to do is um, move the seat office downstairs. And then I can move um, my two assistants into what's the selectman's office, have the center office where uh, one of my assistants is, has a pure meeting room. It'll be, you can now can have, have a buffer in between and then have the selectman's, media, uh, selectman's room move across the hall. And you know, we just sort of, sort of create a dividing line on that. But I'd have to, I have to say, I really appreciate the, um, the two assistants I have and the two um, department assistants in selectman's, selectman's office. They they work well together. And there's a lot of times where all four of them have to be grabbed to work on the same thing to get it done. And they also coordinate with one another to make sure that. Even if the two two people in my office or in the selectman's office do have to be out for whatever reason, that they're in to have some sort of coverage. So, did I get did I get my little Grammy song? Well, actually, what's happening is yeah, the, the music's starting to play. You're about to get cut off. We have about ten minutes left, and 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 I'm okay with going over that, even though it won't be taped, if if that's what we need to do. But I think we're almost at the end. So, if anybody has any questions on the uh, Administration, we can move on to the selectmen and legal. Okay. All right, selectmen and legal. The selectmen office, that's oh, the two sure. departmental. For the last few minutes, take the glory. <laughs> two <laughs> departmental assistants on there. They also do everything from the um, from the events to the liquor licenses to setting up the selectmen's agendas. Um, they they wear many hats on there, and they're all they're often the front lines for uh, complaints and such. Again, the printing and mailing. There's some items that the selectmen do directly. Office supplies. <coughs> they are essentially what the what they are you'll see the dues and memberships that travel in conferences the mma dues for the selectmen uh which you know you want to have them on board run roughly roughly almost that whole amount so they're costly for the town but that's part of it and then the traveling conferences as we're lucky to have some of the selectmen that do attend the conferences and have been able to bring monies back to the town as well as plants and other ideas so Questions on selectmen? Okay, legal. All right. What do we have left on there? Historical. Audit. Yeah, the, what are we, the next one, I'm sorry, my computer died on me for the schedule. 40. What's that? 12 of 40. Uh, You lose that Where one? Are we? On what? I might have with all my papers. Which one did we say it is? It's 12. No, the name of the department. Which um, department? It just says legal services. Oh, legal. Well, I don't even need to look at it. I can tell you that there's, you'll see there's two of them on there. One is for the contract for the town council, Richard Bowen, which is a flat fee of $180,000. Mm -hmm. Then we have a second one, which is labor council, uh, the Joe Emerson. His is $40,000. Last year, we had, we had to put a little extra money in because of all the contracts. We are still projected at being under budget on the 40000 this year. I would love to get all the contracts out for multi years because that's one of the things you don't need uh, you don't need labor counsel as much for that. So uh, again, town council is a flat fee and uh, labor counsel is is on a separate rate. So do you, you always use the same labor council, the same office? This is the same one that we've we've had now for for about a year, and the um, the selectmen myself have been very happy with the representation. And that's on that. and he, how many contracts does he do for that forty thousand dollars the whole year? 
Yeah, we have 11 contracts that we have with the, throughout the town. Also, and we're in arrears multiple years. Comp claims and the rest too, right? Uh, we also have other items. We've also had the firings and such. You'll see as well that we have, um, you know, we have had to fire, or lay off multiple people, and you know it can always happen. But we still, we have not had the same legal issues that we had in the past. And I think part of that is from the listening to the good, good advice from labor council and such, and following the directions. So. Although it's a, there can be a lot of money, it's, I think it's paying dividends and saving us overall on there and just being smart about how we handle ourselves. Um, how is this plan factored in? I mean, I've been on the Finance Committee six years, and back in the beginning we had huge legal costs. And, I mean, it was always presented that some of that had to do with um, you know zoning issues and land courts and all this other stuff so are we still getting those bills or are they are they being put into something under the department themselves how is that factoring uh, in labor uh, not labor council excuse me town council under the flat fee does handle that as well um he he subs out to uh, um john witten who i believe planning and zoning is uh, really enjoys and then he pays him directly so that 180,000 covers that as well they do have some extra money in their budgets in case they wanted to go to to something else and not use the, the town council but that's being covered by the 180 as well so okay thanks we do ask that they call town council first in case he can answer the question before going to the next one any more questions Last chance, going once, going twice. First, I want to thank you for, I think it was a, uh, when we first talked about it, it was a lot to do in one day, but yeah. we apparently got through it. Yeah. Uh, and also for, I think it helps when you have a crew like this that shows up in force. So that, that was, give ourselves a hand on that one. Um, now we're down to the reality. We, we saw a little bit about what people are looking for mm -hmm. and what they mean as far as their services. And I think a lot of good questions were asked, but the reality is 2.493264. That's the reality we face. So we're looking at several. Uh, what we're going to have to do is go back and discuss this in our meetings as well as with the, the next Tuesday. We'll st discuss it with the selectmen as well as the uh, school, and then we'll come up with a plan for, for addressing it. But... What I saw today was a lot of departments that are scaled back, uh, in some cases scaled back to the point where it, it's not um, advantageous for them to grow any further. They can't. Yep. They're stymied by that. And, and I think we've seen a lot of services in this town that maybe have been diminished to a certain degree already. And if we consider the 2.493, it, it could be a long, hard road ahead for all of us. So. I appreciate your time, and, and I guess we'll see you Tuesday and next Wednesday, and we'll get into the, the real meat now at this point. So, And then thank to all the department heads. They certainly all did a good job with their presentation to the uh, Finance Committee as well. So thank you. Thank you, and I appreciate your time and the uh, committee's time making making it available and the, and the questions as well. So it's, it's informative, and I, I appreciate it. So you have a pretty good lineup of department managers. Uh, yep. We do. We're, we're lucky to have them, so we're trying to keep everybody. Nobody seemed to be afraid of you this year, so. Uh, I, I, got, a, I got to change that. I got to do no, something different. <laughs> no, I, think, I think one of the things we did see this year where we haven't seen as much in the past is there seems to be that attitude that we're doing, they're doing everything they can, and they believe you're doing everything you can. You can. So there, there's the spirit of working together. Yep. And, you know, so I, I and I, I especially, uh, I, did, I didn't see all the police because I, had another something else I had to do, but I think that was a very telling budget as well. We got yeah. more depth and knowledge on that one than I think we have in the past as well. So, yeah, and I, there's there's a level of there is a level of frustration where I think everybody's seen, but it's not pointed in any directions or fingers. It's it the, right. the, the situation we don't have enough money, but we're going to work work through it as best we can. Right. Um, and that's the tough thing. So, any, any final.